I got interrupted. <laughs> I got interrupted on my important video that I was making. Thank God I missed it, missed the call. I had to run to the back room. It is a president of a corporation that makes a certain photographic gear. He has wonderful news. Um, I can't tell you what right now. Uh, it's really great news for uh, Fuji. Um, wow. The, the president of the company calls you about something and... Well, that was a really great phone call. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, to can continue that on, I was talking about uh, how knife making is uh, absolutely no different um, than uh, it comes to lens manufacture. You know, you have the exact same piece of bar stock on the steel, and depending on how you hammer it and beat it and fold it and heat it, you know, you end up with radically different things. So people that think that lens design, and there are CAD designs where you can actually enter in, it's like, I want to make a 50 millimeter. You enter in information, it will output uh, the lens design, the refractive indices of that lens. It will indicate uh, the level of dispersion, uh, the area of projection, but it won't tell you. There is no software program that will tell you the characteristics, the artistic uh, je ne sais quoi of a lens uh, as so far as its output. That unspeakable, ineffable artistic quality. It's like, you know, is it going to tell you if it's going to make uh, soap bubble bokeh? I mean, is it going to tell you whether the uh, background, the out of focus details are creamy and I uh, impressionistic? There are so many things that cannot be um, calculated, quantified. In lens, the same thing, in every expert knife maker and swordsmith will tell you the exact same damn thing. There can be a guy that's been making swords, and there are st still some of them in uh, Sekai City, Japan, where they've been making samurai swords for hundreds of years. Some of these guys that are 80 years old have been apprenticing since they were teenagers. They've been making swords for decades. They'll tell you that each one has its own soul, and they don't mean that just figuratively. They mean it literally. Even though they've got the technique perfected, they still, after 60, 70 years, cannot tell you how that blade will turn out. They still produce failures, and they have to start from scratch again. They hope and pray, and they do everything. You know, These are people that have been apprenticing for 30 years and making swords for 70 years. Now, it's more consistent in lens manufacture, obviously. We're not talking about that. But the lens design itself depending on what sort of additives you make and how many elements uh, you insert and when the additives you place in what element at what point it i've never actually found a more perfect analogy for uh, lens design than a knife making and sword making because you can't there are an enormous amount of variables that cannot be quantified at all and this is irrefutable and undeniable if you want to argue with me about it have at it you won't get very far if you were able to talk to any lens manufacturer from uh, Nikon or uh, Fuji they will tell you that fat bald dude is right there is an art in there that we have to design the lens and redesign it and it comes out with a special characteristic that we like and a lot of lenses that are out there you know, they may be really sharp and uh, have great... Re Lens is a lot more than about sharpness. You could have a blade that is extremely sharp, but it's almost impossible to resharpen because it is such hardened steel. It's like, well, it holds its edge for a really long time, but when you want to sharpen it, this lens... I mean, when you want to sharpen this uh, knife, it's a piece of crap because it is impossible to sharpen unless you whip out the grinder, which most people don't have a grinder. They have knife sharpeners, but they don't have grinders. I mean, the all of these characteristics contribute to the whole picture, which is a lens and its design. That phone call I took was really important. That was an amazing phone call. There's some really awesome news for Fuji. I can't tell you yet, but uh, that was the head honcho of a really big company. Um, we were laughing. We were having a good old time on that phone call. So uh, that's that. Um, that's uh, what I wanted to talk about. And so I guess this is part two where I got interrupted on the phone call from part one. And uh, thanks for watching. Okay, bye.